right, here we go, live with YouTube Gaming. We are so thrilled to have you with us live. We want to welcome you to an hour of video game power, and we've got Matt Pat, the game theorist, that, with us. Oh man, video game power, Nintendo power, too. Nintendo power. You're going to be talking about Nintendo. I am going to be talking a, a lot about Nintendo today. debate coming up. Great to have you with us. We've got Jessica Chobot from Hi. Nerdist. Great to have you with Thank us. Thank you. And Save Point. How are things, Jessica? Everything's are good. Yes? It's, yeah. it's the season, right? All the games are coming out? All the games are coming out. I'm starting to feel a little stressed that I don't have enough time to play them, but at the same time, it's just nice to see some new stuff hitting the shelf. So I know. It's been I've a actually been eyeballs deep in some Stardew Valley, so that's my happy place. <laughs> a great game. I think we'll hear about that at the Game Awards. That's an amazing game. Uh, Kyle Bossman, fan favorite. Great to have you with us, Bossman. I don't, no like, glass? It. I don't like it when you call me fan favorite, Jeff. Am Are I you fan favorite? No, I'm I not. So. I think no people, shame. people like their boss. <laughs> Embrace the love, man. Okay, all right, all right. I'll be fan favorite. I'll be fan favorite. You'll be fan favorite. All right, yeah. well, let's get to some news. Okay, talking sure. about what's happening in the world of gaming in our Let's News segment. Uh, first up, this week we got a lot of trailers for some brand new video games for Dishonored 2, Titanfall 2, and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. But they all had one thing in common. They were live action trailers, not actually from the game. Uh, so we were wondering, uh, do trailers like these live action ones, uh, do you prefer them or do you prefer to see gameplay or cutscenes? We want to know from you guys at home at primetimevoting.com. Lock in and let us know uh, what you guys feel. Do you prefer these or not? Um, has a live action video game trailer ever changed your desire to buy a game? Let's uh, have that vote right ha happen at primetimevoting.com. But let's jump into this right now. Jessica, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Dishonored, mm -hmm. Call of Duty, they all do these trailers. Do you, do you get excited by them when you see them on an NFL game? Uh, I mean, I get, I get hyped up in the fact that it's just, you know, I like the grandioseness of it all. Yeah. But the, honestly, the only thing that really gets me, like, deciding whether or not I'm going to buy a game or if it's kind of up to par with what I have in my head is gameplay. Yep. So I always look for gameplay. I don't know if it's just because... You know, I've been doing this for a long time, and so I kind of, to jump on the hype train for me, it just doesn't really happen anymore, yeah. or what, but um, I appreciate the effort and the pizzazz that goes into live action trailers, yeah. but I would much rather see gameplay right. um, so that I have a better idea of what I'm buying. Absolutely, and the, like the Titanfall 2 one, that was like a cool CG thing that I think the guys at Blur did, so it's like it sometimes feels, you know, inspired by yeah, the game, like but it's not Yeah, like this to me, I don't, I don't care. Right. Yeah. And I mean, the goal, I guess, of these is to potentially get a more mainstream audience yeah. to be like, this looks really cool, I want to play it. Now, what's your take? Like, even the Call of Duty ones, you know, it's fun, but they've been doing sort of that same concept, mm -hmm. I feel like, for six plus years now. Yeah, well first, the news yeah. story that I really want to talk yeah. about is the fact that you guys are matching. Right yeah, now. like you oh, yeah. really like, <laughs> your, your teals, yeah, your exactly. teals are really jiving it together. The, it fits the Halloween theme, I mean, all three right? of you, really, really you're blue, you're, you're, blue? you're kind of blue? your blue, uh, blue? Uh, kitty space Why are you so shirt? drab over here? I don't know. We're blue, <laughs> dub a dee, dub a die. <laughs> I like to stick out. That's a throwback for you. No, I have to agree with Jessica. You know, I am not super excited to see these sorts of real life trailers, and I totally agree. I think that it's an effort to expand the, the gaming audience right. outward and, and to kind of attract that mainstream audience where, you know, they not, might not be as excited to see, like, the, the graphical fidelity that we can expect from this game. They might not relate to as closely as, as a typical gamer, yeah. like, just gameplay scenes and understand what they're seeing in those right. moments. And so I understand the need to create these gameplay or these uh, live action trailers. But honestly, for me, the buying decision is ultimately going right. to be based on, well, reviews first and foremost, mm -hmm. but also just the gameplay that I can expect. Yeah, right. I, thought, I always just thought it was so much more impressive when you got a chance to see Red Dead, mm -hmm. you know, come out and look so amazing. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I'm so on board well, for this versus something like that. And would never do a live action trailer. Yeah, like, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's not going to happen. But right. just as a comparison, yeah. to me, that was uh -huh. just so much more impactful than something like this, which can sometimes and oftentimes does come off as like a fan film. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I agree. And that's the thing is like, you know, we've seen on YouTube, like people will do these sort of films yeah. inspired yeah. by and these games. And as games. a fan, that's amazing. Yeah. But from the company, I'm kind of like, eh, yeah. I don't, yeah. No, it's of a great point. Of course you can do that. You've got the budget. Right. I'd rather see the fans do this because they don't uh, have sure. the budget and they're actually being creative well, and solving and even, these problems. And in Titanfall 2, actually, the opening sequence is actually made by these like fans up in Toronto that did such good work that they're like, oh, yeah. let's, this play fight affects guys. That's and they cool. actually said like, let's, I think they did some of the video game high school stuff and they're just like, let's oh, get these awesome. guys to do stuff in the game because the fan films are so good now. Kyle, you've been quiet over there. What, what does the bossman think of these? He's going to say anything because he doesn't want to lose his fan favorite. Yeah, we need to hear from the fan favorite himself. I don't want to ruffle the feathers of my fan base. Uh, oh. I think that um, I think that totally uh, live action trailers can work. Mm -hmm. I think that you can use them if 
it's a situation where your game couldn't communicate that thing. Yeah. Like if you're going for like comedy, like my one of my favorites is the Destiny ones from two years ago, where it'd be just real life people having a fun time within Destiny and just like. Yeah being themselves and telling jokes as friends do when they play games, that wouldn't have worked as well with gameplay. Like, there's some things to communicate. Yeah. These three trailers we just watched are real bad. Yeah. They're all dumb and they don't communicate <laughs> wow. anything. They're real bad. They wow. couldn't have Hard. without uh, gameplay. I will toss in the argument that one that did stick out to me that I did really enjoy, although I can't remember if it was considered, it, I don't think it was really a trailer so much as um, a like live action, uh, series they were trying to do mm -hmm. to um, reinforce the title that was coming out was the Alan Wake one. Do you remember that yeah, old yeah. Machinima mm -hmm. series that yep. they did? Yeah, that no, I, mean, I thought was actually really well done. And so, and like, yeah, I mean, and then you know, Quantum Break had live like live action yeah. can be used in the right way. Yeah. but I mm -hmm. think you're right. Some of these things, I, look. They're to appeal to this kind of broad mainstream audience. Who does that? Who's like, oh, cool, there's real actors. I got to get that game. I don't know. Uh, you know, Who but is that I can see parents maybe sitting at home and their kid wants a game and they're like, what's this Dishonored 2 thing yeah. or whatever? <laughs> and then they turn it on and they're like, oh, okay. Right, or, or it helps convey the fantasy that you can expect. And, I, and especially for games where the graphics might not be up to snuff. I think a good right. example of this is for MOBA games. Yep. Like League of Legends, I think, is a fantastic example where a lot of their CGI, you know, yep. created cinematic traits trailers are fantastic, you yep. know, with like the epic graphics and seeing the like powers that you use in the game kind of fully right. realized in this computer generated environment sure. is really compelling. And let's say with like Blizzard stuff, like they do yeah. incredible cinematics. Right, yeah. but for the nature of those sorts of games, MOBA yeah. strategy game, etc., that's just not the graphical style of those games. And so I think those do a good job of kind of conveying the, the, the imagination and kind of the mindset that those sorts of games can put you in, yeah. but might not necessarily be reflected by the gameplay. So in those instances, yes, I can see the value of those, but for a typical game like this, where it's like a first person shooter or you know, a, a game like Titanfall or whatever, those I wanna see the, the actual graphical fidelity. Yes, I agree, all right. Moving on to our second topic related to Nintendo Switch. Of course, last Thursday, we had the announcement of the Nintendo Switch with that uh, video that I think has been viewed like over 18 million times on YouTube the last time I looked. So uh, everyone's been watching it and everyone's been buzzing about it. Now, some new details are starting to come to light about the Switch. Uh, lots of speculation. They announced January 12th, 2017. The price and the launch date will be revealed live in Tokyo at an event. So uh, Nintendo is kind of rolling all out. But let's talk about some of the, the kind of news coming out this week. Kyle, I'll start with you. Uh, you know, there was there's rumors now, obviously, that it is a touch screen, even though they didn't show that. I saw a patent that was filed that suggested maybe even like this controller might like have a little projector in it that would like project things on your hand and you would be able to interact with those. Yeah. Are you getting more or less hyped about the Switch seven days later? Seven days later, uh, I am equally hyped. Okay. Uh, I don't necessarily buy into uh, the patents. Nintendo's, okay. I've seen a lot of Nintendo patents over the ages for lots of things that have never come to fruition. He reads Nintendo patents, <laughs> <It's right>. I, <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm crazy about them, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Most of them don't become a thing. Uh, but uh, I do believe some of them. I believe the rumors of the three hour uh, uh, battery, battery life. life. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. Uh, Does so that like, bum you out? Not me personally. Ew. I mean, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I, if ever I'm, I'll probably I'll be on my couch and then I'll just like plug it in over here. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? I'm I'm okay with three hours. It's yeah. obviously not good. Yeah. So, are you, but you're equally hyped. I'm maybe more hyped. More hyped. More okay. Hyped. Matt, no, Matt it's like Pat, a little what? seed that can grow in my heart. I think that's what's going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Pat, what's your take? We you know announced last week you weren't on the panel. Are you know you're going to be having this debate about should <laughs> Nintendo keep making consoles or not? I don't know which yeah. side you'll be on. We're about to find out. Yeah. But. Uh, what you, what's your take on Switch? Do you think that is this are, is it are you hyped like this is going to change your life? I mean, it's going to change my <laughs> life. I don't know. Uh, I I will say this. Kyle's I was nodding. I am <laughs> always excited by anything that Nintendo does yes. because I grew up with Nintendo. To me, Nintendo is the purest distillation of what gaming means. Right? They're always trying to innovate. They're always trying to come out with new ideas. This is me arguing against myself for my yes. deadlock debate in a couple <laughs> minutes here because I got okay. the other side of the argument. Okay. But um, you know, I'm always always excited by what they're doing to try and push the industry forward. That being said though, a lot of times it comes to bite them in the butt. Yeah. And a lot of the, you know, the adherence to cartridges back in the N64 days, uh, you know, was was something that was really kind of put them behind. But then also it, with the Switch, the thing that I'm worried about is it's trying to strike this balance of being a console and a portable 
which I think is a great idea because that really jives with how people play these days. Mm -hmm. But it seems like it's almost too big to be a portable and hearing things about the three hour battery life, that seems kind of unintuitive if you are looking for kind of that play on the go experience. Yeah. Um, so I just really have, a, I have a lot of questions about it and I'm excited to get my hands on it and start playing around with it. Uh, but anything that Nintendo does, I'm just excited to see because in an industry that is very risk averse right now, they're the ones who are willing to kind of put their money where their mouth is and put it on the line and say, hey, we're gonna break the norm and try to do something different, whether it pays off or not. Absolutely. Jessica, what's your mm. take on all things Switch? Um, I'm really excited for it. I'm okay. probably going to be an earlier adopter of it. For me, it is, from what I've seen so far, um, it's kind of breathing fresh life into Nintendo consoles that I just didn't really, I mean, the Wii was fine, but I kind of just gathered dust, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, Wii U was fine, but then I did, this one I'm actually excited about, and I think that's because I do travel a lot, and yeah. so, and I do think Nintendo has done mobile gaming as far as their, like, 3DS and the DS line and everything, just so ever, ever, even since the Game Boy, so perfectly, and they've got it so cornered so well, yeah. that the combination of the two, I can't imagine not working for them. I'm glad that the innovation that they're trying to push is something that they're relatively familiar with in just different sections of their company rather than, hey, we're going to come up with a whole unique, entirely new way to try and get you to play games. I'd rather just know, give me a whole unique, entirely new way to how to play games to fit my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so for that, yeah. this is perfect. Plus, I love the fact that they're aiming more towards a, for lack of a better phrase, uh, yeah, I don't even want to say it, but say more it. like a bigger say gamer it. market rather yeah. than like a kids market. Uh -huh. um, well, no, that you know, was, that I don't want to say hardcore gamer because I, I hate that pretty... phrase and it doesn't apply anymore. Yeah. But just that, that no, you but know. The whole direction we talked about yeah. last week, that I think that the trailer and everything like it was geared towards kind of like 20 something people. Mm -hmm. They were playing NBA. They were playing what looked like Skyrim. Yeah. It was like it was. That cute. burned my ass though. What? That Skyrim thing. Yeah. Oh, are you kidding me? I was so <laughs> stoked. And then later on, Bethesda drops the fact that no, we were just showing off the capability. What? 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 Okay, I'm sure you two. We got trolled out. a little bit. We got trolled. <laughs> I'm sure that's going to come out. A little bit. Though, right? I'm not saying they weren't right to do it <laughs> yeah. because obviously you want to get as much hype as possible and like show off what it can do. Right. I get that. But come on, yeah. you know Skyrim's gonna drop next week. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's you totally is killing me. video yeah. games, Jeff. We it's talked like about this two weeks ago in Deadlock. That and I'm Nintendo's saying, hyping too. I'm still all aboard for it. I'm still yeah. stoked. Whatever Bethesda relationship has with Nintendo, super excited for it. Whether we get Skyrim or not, that said, yes. I feel a little trolled. Okay, well we'll find out on January the 12th. I guess, Triggered. Whether a little you're right or not. Got a little pissed. <laughs> All right, moving on to our next Let's News topic. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Halloween. We have this fantastic live with YouTube Gaming pumpkin, so we wanted to talk about horror-themed games. <laughs> All because of this pumpkin yeah, I'm just right like, there. You know, I saw the crow, the pumpkin, I'm like, yeah, we got to talk about horror-themed <laughs> games. So let's kick off with a conversation with a poll for you guys. All of you watching online around the world, go to primetimevoting.com right now. We want to know what type of Halloween or horror game genre is your favorite. You can vote now amongst those three uh, categories and let's talk about some of our favorite Halloween horror games. Uh, Kyle Bossman, how, how do you like to scare yourself? I do not. A nice, uh, <laughs> nice little uh, wristband there too. Yeah, this means I work here. Okay, um. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I should take that off. Oh well. I thought it meant uh, like you were of age to get like yeah, an alcoholic I'm, beverage or something. I'm good. I'm over 18. Uh, so, Jeff, I got to be honest. I, I hate scary games. I hate scary yes. movies. I hate scary people. Yes. I only like uh, this. I like Costume Quest. This is uh -huh. my this is my Halloween game right here. I feel That's like adorable. It's I, about the joy of Halloween. You remind me a lot of the kids in Costume Quest. Yes, I mean <laughs> I know you're doing a mean joke, but it's fun to dress up in a costume. It's fun to like play the fantasy and go trick or treating. I that know. game's all about that. I love that. Uh -huh. that Playing fantasy is the best. It yeah. is. Oops. Costume <laughs> Quest is a very fun game. Uh, Matt Pat, is there any uh, classic uh, for you? Uh, I mean, obviously, you see the FNAF franchise appearing yes. on the board right there, which, you know, is, is kind of near and dear to That's my heart staple. at this point. It, it, it's okay. my go-to. Yes. Uh, but if I were to actually go back and say, like, hey, these are the games that I really love every Halloween, the Castlevania series, yeah. always, like, I've played literally every game in that franchise. I've beaten every game. I love that game. Um, and then also, uh, one of your personal favorites, I think, is Eternal Dark. Yes. Uh, I, I think that that game is fantastic because it's, it's different. It's not jump scare horror. Yep. It's, it's all this psychological. No, when I played that game yeah. on GameCube, I was just blown away. And like the things it did 
where you know you were playing and all of a sudden you thought your controller was disconnected and yeah. it wasn't. It's like there, you know, and Kojima has played with that idea too, but mm -hmm. sort of breaking the fourth wall, yeah. freaking you out. And you're right, it's not straight ahead like like saw horror, right. but it's just psychological thriller. And yeah, that was and, a, and it a uses company. the medium of being a video game to its yeah. advantage, right? So Great. like you're getting the blue screen of death, your yep. controller starts to wig out, you start to yeah. see like it, the and screen it gets starts you. to glitch. Like, I remember still playing and you're like, it's like something is wrong with my controller <laughs> right. and you get so upset Do and you're like, oh, your memory card it. too? Like it pretend your memory mm -hmm. card is yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Your save file. That's the scariest thing of all. That's so scary. Save file corrupt. And you say your save file is corrupt after you spent 15 hours. Right. I mean, it's just like, you know, when your computer crashes you're like, oh, I just lost all this stuff. I was like, right, yeah, yeah, you really did. But imagine, like, Adobe Premiere is like, oh, just kidding. Yeah. It's like, you'd be like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <God." laughs> you know, especially, like, that was on, on the GameCube, and it's like, oh, my gosh, yeah. my save file of Super Mario Sunshine's gone. Yep. Yeah, that was an am I wish more people would do that. Jessica, <laughs> what about you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's it been drove me nuts. <laughs> collecting those <laughs> exactly. blue coins. There's oh, so many blue yeah, coins in that, that game. That was oh. such a good game. Chobot, what about you? Uh, Silent Hill 2 is probably mm -hmm. my favorite, mostly because, like, you guys were kind of saying um, with your choice uh, the psychological horror I prefer yeah. psychological horror games versus um, like blood and guts kind of saw stuff right. um, and I just loved it I loved that world I was super excited when PT dropped and mm -hmm. everybody got to play the demo mm -hmm. and then super heartbroken yeah. when I heard that it was no longer going to do you happen. still have PT on your PS4 I do yeah mm -hmm. uh, it's worth a lot of money yeah, I know. On eBay, I think like PS4s with PT oh. go for like big money. Really? Yeah, because I mean, you can't download it anymore. <laughs> and like, so people will sell a PS4 with a PT because that's the only way to get it is sort of pre installed mm -hmm. wow. on a PS4. And yeah. you look on eBay right now, it's pretty premium. I kind of, I'm still in that collector's mentality though, where uh -huh. when I turn it on, I like to see it there and know that I've got all the cookies kind of thing. You know, like, it's all mine. Oh. It's all but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, so I haven't gotten ready to sell it yet, but, uh, I say time. that sometimes, I, I say all the time that I'm going to sell all my stuff and then I still have, I actually still have that PSP from years ago. So I like keep all of my gaming swag. Of course, it's going to oh, be yeah. in the Chobot Museum one day. Yeah, right? The, the, the all, museum all. dedicated to myself in some creepy man's basement. <laughs> yes, that will be my legacy. With all your consoles. <laughs> yes, and pictures of this my was, feet. This was Jessica's PSP back this in the day. This was her PT was, copy. Yeah, <laughs> Bam. Smell it. Nah. See, this is perfect Halloween horror right here. All right. <laughs> that is pretty uh, terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, a little later, we're going to play a little Undead Nightmare from Red Dead Redemption to help us get in the Halloween mood. Make sure you stick around for that. We're going to have crazy music. We're going to have ghosts. We're going to have pumpkins. We may even have a little candy. You never know. We'll have to stay tuned. I like candy. Out. Absolutely. We'll Why do we have candy on the Let's News segment, Jeff? I know. We should have had a bowl of candy, right? We absolutely Something. should have That's candy. I, I, I have to apologize. Kyle, could you just show me a little candy? We don't show, have candy. Man. We I'm don't done. have ghosts. <laughs> crazy. We have none of those things Jeff has We promising. have a Freddy Krueger <laughs> glove, and we have a hand in a pot and a magic book. <laughs> Maybe the candy's like hidden in here. Candy. Who's got No candy. Disappointing. Right, fine. <laughs> I get it. All right, well, let's move on and talk about our... Uh, Favorite YouTube creator we're putting a spotlight on every week. We like to find someone who's uh, unknown out there and uh, expose them to you guys. This is Insane in the Rain music. He's young, very talented, and he's a musician named Carlos. And Carlos does jazz covers of famous video game themes and songs crossing all the consoles. He plays piano, drums, and saxophone, puts this all together into YouTube videos, and he encourages other creators to use his music in their own projects, it's a bit of a collab. He's been doing this for over four years and uploads every Saturday morning to his channel. Um, and here is Insane in the Rain music covering a song from Undertale. Have a listen to the sweet sounds of Insane in the Rain. Wow, this is good. It's chill. Yeah. It's like the best dentist music <laughs> ever. <laughs> Does it, right? Does that feel good? It, it feels does. good. I do. I feel soothed. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Chill. Very chill. He's, yeah. he's really talented. And uh, I feel like now we can forgive you for the lack of candy. I, I mean, let's not We're going to work on that. <laughs> this is a live show, and we have like 40 minutes left. So okay. stay tuned. If you stick around, you might get a piece of candy. I can only hope. All right. Stay tuned. All right.